Hello everybody, another quick video today. What I wanted to demonstrate was the use of Rosetta LFO controlling parameters in AU Gen X. So on the sc screen at the moment, we're running within AUM. I've got my vocal channel on the first channel. I've got the LFO in the, in the MIDI channel. And then I've got AU Gen X in the third channel. Now, if you've not seen AU Gen X before, it is a an experimental noise machine, essentially. Uh, I would highly recommend having a look at Jade Starr's video that she did on Good Friday this year. Doug Woods at the Sound Test Room has also done a number of really good videos exploring the weird and wonderful things you can do with AU Gen X. So I'll, give, I'll put some links in the description to those channels below and I highly recommend checking them out. But without further ado, let's get into AU Gen X and start automating it. So let's go into it and let's find a preset which has plenty going on. There we go. So we've got a pitch running on a square wave and we've also got some noise also on a square wave. So what we might want to do is to automate the panning of these. And at the moment we can see the noise is panned hard to the left and the tone is panned to the right. Now we can drag these by hand. But what if we want to automate that with an LFO? What we do, very simple, we go to the top of the audio unit to this nice little icon which I think is supposed to be faders. You click on that and it gives us the MIDI controls. So what it shows is at the top the MIDI source and then at the bottom all the different parameters which are available to the controls. What we need to do to begin with is to select a MIDI source. So if we click on that gives us all our MIDI sources, one of which is Rosetta LFO. So let's select that and go back. So we've now got a source. We just need to decide what the destination of the LFO is going to be. Now the easiest way to do this in, in AUM is to click this little beacon icon. And that just tells you to tweak any parameters to show its MIDI control. So I think what we're going to do was this noise stereo effect. So as soon as we move that, we go back to this original screen, which shows that the noise pan has been selected. And all we need to do is to pick the right CC that the LFO is broadcasting on and the right channel. Now on memory, the Zeta LFO is set on channel one, and the first of its three LFOs is running on channel 13. So we click that, hit done, and astoundingly nothing happens. And the reason that nothing has happened is that the LFO will only operate if the transport is switched on. So as soon as we start the transport, we've now got that noise stereo pan being controlled automatically. So what else could we do? Well. We could obviously change the stereo on that, but how about playing with the, the pitch on this? Yeah, we'll stick with this one, I think. Yeah, I think that's the nicest one to play with. Now, we've got a number of different parameters here, and we could change where it, the square wave switches from on to off. We can change the amplitude of it from the bottom end or the top end. I think, I think we'll play with that one. So again, we click on our faders. We've already got the LFO selected, so we hit our little beacon and we'll move that one. And it's the oscillator frequency suite, max frequency. So our next LFO is on channel 15. 
of CC15 on channel 1. Because the transport is already running, it will automatically work. Now that's all the control happening within AU Gen X, but what if the speed of the LFO is not right, or maybe you don't want it going out of audible frequency or quite as low as that? Well, all of that is, is organized in the LFO itself. So if we close down the AU Gen X audio unit and go to the LFO itself, what we can see here is the three LFOs that it's running. Well, it's the first one on channel on CC13, the second one on CC15. So those are the two we're using. We have a third one here. If you wanted more LFOs, you just add more and more Rosetta modules. That's all fine. So what we need to do, let's reduce how high that frequency is cutting off. Let's maybe drop it down to about halfway. Okay, that's sort of a little bit more like. What we can also do is we can change the rate that they are being modulated and it can be modulated within itself as well. Well, let's change let's change the rate of let's drop this down. So we've got a real choice of, of what's going on here, but which, whichever path we're using within this, it's the same adjustment up here. So I hope that was helpful. The intention today was just to demonstrate how you can connect an LFO to an AUV3 within AUM and allow it to control various parameters inside. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and please subscribe for, for further content. Take care and I shall see you again in the next video. Bye for now.